this lecture I will be discussing about the differential amplifiers. Differential amplifiers are the basic building blocks of the operational amplifiers uh, which are uh, in turn uh, used in analog circuits. So now today before going to the differential amplifiers let us first uh, discuss about the uh, difference between the single ended and differential ended signals. So coming to the uh, single ended and differential ended signals. So, uh, as we all know uh, voltage is defined between the two points. So, whenever we want to measure a uh, voltage, uh, it is actually uh, measured between the two points. So, in case of single ended signals, one of the uh, node is grounded and the output is taken at the other node. So, uh, what is the reason we have we want to go for the differential ended signals? Uh, one main reason is as we uh, as we use the uh, voltage signals which are very low uh, nowadays we are working the uh, in a nanometer uh, technology where we have to deal with the low voltage signals so at high frequencies and low voltage uh, swings the uh, ground potential will vary uh, more than the signal level means the uh, level of the ground varies more than the signal level which corrects your V out. So, th that may be due to the uh, many variations that may be due to the temperature variations or implant variations or due to the short channel effects, short channel lengths. That is the main reason why we want to go for the differential ended signals. In differential ended signals, we actually uh, we actually take the voltage signal as the difference of the two nodes. Means the signal lies in the difference of the let's say if this is V1 and this is V2, then V out is equal to V1 minus V2 rather than on a single node. So, uh, th if there is any noise in, in the, the advantage of the differential ended signaling is if you have a common mode noise present on both wires. So, ultimately it gets cancelled in your V out and, and it is like uh, uh, your signal lies in V 1 minus V 2 and your noise gets cancelled. So, uh, we want uh, today we will learn about differential amplifiers which uses this differential ended scheme. So, now uh, let us go to the differential amplifiers. Uh, one way to make the differential amplifiers is by using two single ended by using two single ended amplifiers. So, you have two n two n MOSFETs let us name it as m 1 and m 2 and you have a pull up resistors and this is your VDD and this is let us say name it as an RD and here you have V I 1 and here you have V I 2. So, these are actually V 0 1 and V 0 2 these are the outputs. So, now this is actually the uh, basic uh, model of the differential amplifier. Uh, we make use of two single ended amplifiers here. So, now uh, let us see what is the problem here. So, um, if we see uh, the uh, differential input is given by V i 1 minus V i 2 and the, uh, the output is given as V 0 1 minus V 0 2. Now, actually our signal lies in the difference of the uh, inputs, but not the common mode signal. So, we like to amplify the difference of the signal, but not the common mode. So, what is the problem here? So, let us see like if you have uh, you have a V i 1, let us see let us uh, uh, anal analyze in a each one m 1 and m 2 separately. So, V i 1 gives you a 1 times so, okay, V 0 1 gives you a 1 times V i 1 and similarly V 0 2 gives you A 2 times 
V i 2. So, uh, you can say that V 0 1 plus V 0 2 is equal to A 1 V i 1 plus A 2 V i 2. If you say A 1 is equal to A 2, A times V i 1 plus V i 2. Here you can see that we are amplifying the common mode signal as much as we are amplifying the different signal. So, we do not want that to be happen. So, now what we have to do in order to uh, reduce the amplification of the common mode signal and we want to amplify only the different signal. So, we have for this sake we are actually changing the architecture little bit in the sense ok let us say uh, I will just change it here only. We are actually including a tail current source with a current of I bias here. So, what is the effect of the I bias here? So, actually uh, uh, it makes it makes the current from the both the transistors uh, like the current here is I d by 2 and I d by 2 in ideal case in the sense when both m 1 and m 2 are in saturation. So, uh, so if suppose if v i 1 is greater than v i 2 and m 1 is on and m 2 is off it, it says it, it says that one of the current has to decrease and one of the current has to increase in order to make I bias equal to I d uh, I d by 2 um, let us say if this is I d 1 and this is I d 2 I d 1 by 2 plus I d. So, uh, that is uh, with the help of this architecture we can actually reduce the amplification of the common mode signals and get the uh, amplification of the different signals. So, I want to uh, now let us look into the input common mode range of the differential amplifier. So, how do you find out the input common mode range of the differential amplifier? Uh, it, it is actually a DC parameter which uh, uh, which gives you the uh, safest range of your differential amplifier working range in the sense like um, the range over which range of values uh, input CMR input common mode it is an actually range of values range of values it is an actually a DC parameter over which your differential amplifier works satisfactorily. In the sense the m 1 and m 2 should be in saturation they should not shut down because you cannot go till V d d you cannot go till ground. So, the you have a certain values to for your differential amplifier to work satisfactorily. So, let us find out first find out what is the uh, minimum CMR. minimum input common mode range. So, from this <coughs> you can see here uh, the minimum CMR you can find out easily. Uh, Let us say if it is V input common mode should be uh, greater than or equal to uh, V V T H n plus 2 times V D sat. This is actually the V threshold of your input MOS transistor and V D sat is a saturation voltage of your constant current source circuit. So, um, what about the maximum input common mode range? Maximum input C M R let us find out maximum input CMR. Uh, let us say uh, let us uh, for simpler case let us say you have connected directly to VDD here um, means if you have something like this. So, M 1 M 2 and then your constant current source with an I bias. So, you have V v i 1 and v i 2. So, I want to find out what is the maximum 
maximum input CMR. So, you have your VDD here. So, normally for a transistor to uh, work properly, uh, you know what is actually the uh, basic rule. The VDS must be greater than VGS minus VTH, ok, VTH n. So, here uh, if you suppose think that your input is a common mode, uh, let us suppose say that your V i 1 is equal to V i 2 is equal to V in common mode which is in turn equal to V g. V g is actually the voltage applied at the gate not the V g s. So, so now I can write this equation as V d greater than V g minus V t h n. So, uh, you can see now I have done let us replace V g with V in C in V d greater than V in C m minus V t h n. So, now you have V in C m must be less than V d plus V d is nothing but your V d d here V d d plus V t h n. This is actually the max input common mode range and this is actually the minimum input common mode range. So, um, let us find out the uh, AC gain of the amplifier, differential amplifier. So, ok, let us before going to the AC gain, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, tell you the um, we will calculate the input common like input common mode maximum input common mode range of an amp differential amplifier with a current mirror load. Let us say you have a current mirror load here and let us show you you have current mirror load. So, see my bias m 1, m 2, v i 1, v i 2 and let us do this as m 3 and m 4 with v d d and this is your output. So, in order to find out the maximum input common mode range for this architecture way we have used the current mirror as load. So, now let us find out what is the voltage at this point. It is actually the V d d minus V s g sat. So, let us from the previous uh, equation we can say that V d must be greater than V g minus V t h n and here you can actually uh, substitute V d or V d greater than V is V in C m minus V d d minus V s g sat. So, V s g sat can be given as V s g sat can be given as V t h p, V d s must be greater than V g s minus V t h. So, um, V s g sat can be given as plus V s g. So, you can include this. V d must be greater than V in common mode minus V d d minus V s g minus V t h p. So, you have V in common mode must be less than V d plus 2 times 
VDD plus VSG plus VTHP. So, okay, it is only one time. So, this is the maximum input common mode range of the differential amplifier if you use an current mirror load. So, let us now calculate the uh, uh, AC gain of the differential amplifier. So, we have here this differential amplifier here biasing. So, now uh, in order to operate the differential amplifier in the saturation region, you have to actually bias the uh, M 1 and M 2. So, that it operates in saturation region. In order to bias, you need to give an a DC voltage. Let us say for ok. Uh, you give an AC first VAC, then over which you give a DC voltage, let us say 3 volts and here you have a DC voltage, let us say 3 volts, which will push the M 1 and M 2 into saturation and then um, let us say you have for a simple, for simple model, let us calculate for the simple model. So, uh, now what is the uh, voltage across this? it is actually the V A C by 2 as the voltages as the asymmetric devices you have the equal and opposite voltages here as the voltages are equal and opposite the current coming through is also an I A C is G M times V A C by 2 and here is also it is minus G M times V A C by 2. So, let us say uh, okay, if you have a taking output here, what is the what is the current here? It is actually G m times V in by 2. So, now, uh, let us say uh, what is the output resistance of the uh, output resistance of when you look into the drain of the M 2, it is actually the small signal resistance which is equal to let us say we call it as an R O 2. So, now you have D is equal to V out is equal to G M times V in. Suppose, if you have a uh, let us take the current mirror load here. So, now you have the PMOS here which has um, let us name it as M 4, then it is it the it has R 0 4 of resistance. So, when you look into the drain of the M 4 and M 2 you have R 0 4 in parallel with R 0 2. So, now you have R 0 4 in parallel with R 0 2. The effective resistance is R 0 4 in parallel with R 0 2. So, when you do for the voltage gain of the differential amplifier, it is actually the transconductance of the input transistor times the output resistance of the, the parallel combination of the output resistance of your load and the input transistor. So, this is actually the uh, AC gain of the uh, differential amplifier. 